Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 267. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, Paul Shares dug up win games backslash unclassified backslash matik. So I'm not entirely certain what to expect with this one, because I'm not sure I know this name, Matik. Or Matic? Probably Matik. That's a lot of bitmap files. Um, we, oh, there's a card back. So there's probably going to be some kind of card game. Apparently the executable is called Jack here. And now we've also got a README. Win 3.x requires VP run 100.dll. That tells us literally nothing. What? <laughs> why is why is this here? Why do you need a readme that just says that and nothing else? I don't know. I got got a bad feeling about this one. But yeah, there's nothing else to Oh no wait, there's a form dot right. Anything else? Oh, form dot right. Jack Matik registration form. Okay, so that's the name of our program. Apparently made by a soft Matik operating out of Quebec. And $13 is the registration fee, which I'm guessing would probably be Canadian at that time, so that would have been more like, I think, 9 or 10 Yeah, some, somewhere around $9 US. But anyways. Okay, let's see what we got here. So Windows Jack Matik version 1.0 by Martin, Martin de Fresne. I think I've got that last name right. Maybe. <laughs> Um, registered users receive the latest updated program with the double down option. Okay, so apparently we're a little, a little, um, what's the word? Handicapped here from not being able to use a particular function. Okay, we know how this goes. Does it maximize? Of course not. Okay, I don't like the fact that there's literally no help for this game anywhere. So I don't even know how to play this. Like, there's no help option, the options is just exit and about. There wasn't any, um, the readme literally just told me that I needed VB Run 100 and that it's for Windows 3.x. And the form here is just a registration form to spend $13 on this. You need some kind of instructions with your game. Oh, there's a doc.write file. <laughs> Hiding in the corner, down at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, wait, never mind, there's no instructions in this file either. <laughs> this is just... what? <laughs> this is just an explanation of the shareware concept, followed by the regist more registration stuff in terms of a double down option that's included. Or wait. It says right here, adds an exciting twist to playing conventional blackjack. So is this just a blackjack game? It could have said something about that. In fact, even if it is just a blackjack game, not everybody knows how to play blackjack. Which means you should still have some kind of instructions, and this game has none. Uh, whatever. We know we're playing a blackjack game now, so... Play... Okay, that just increases how much money we're spending on a deal. So, deal. So, dealer's showing a queen, we've got 11, that's a definite hit. And now we got 21, that's a definite stand. So we win. There we go. And I'm guessing it's showing six cards. Be where? Wait, why is it showing six cards? Um, seventeen. Dealer showing a ten. I got to stand on that. And we still won. And now we have twenty-one with the dealer showing a ten. Now there's this double buttons here, but I'm going to guess if I click this, you must register to. You must registered to use the double down option. Please hit or stand to continue. <laughs> uh, that seems like a really weird feature to have locked off. Like, for such a basic blackjack game, it's like, yeah, that just seems weird to me. And like in this situation here, I didn't get asked for like if I wanted insurance. Like, when the dealer shows an ace, it's just supposed to be an insurance option, but I don't see an insurance option here. 
Like, if I stand, like, and yeah, that's the other thing, too. If the dealer has 21 and you're not buying insurance, the dealer has to automatically show that. Okay, I've got 9, the dealer shows a 10. Definitely hit. I'm up to 19. Yeah, it's a stand. Yeah, that was a, yeah. So yeah, that was Jack Matik. It's, um, a very unusual, very unusual, um, blackjack game. Just because it seems to be missing rules, and at the same time, it's like... Yeah, I'm really not sure what's up with this one. Next up, we have a four-person team dig. Saint of Streets, Retro Swim, Elkovsky, and Zed Supremus have all dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash crypt 20. If I had to guess, I'd guess maybe a Tutankham clone? Maybe? Um, we got a crypt.doc, crypt.exe, crypt.sda, whatever that is. Oh, I guess edit crypt.doc. What do we got here? Crypt 2.0, well that explains the Crypt 20, by Steve Herring, registration $12. Adventures into Unfathomed Depths of Horror, an MS-DOS text adventure program by Steve Herring. Okay, so text adventure. So Crypt takes you to an old church in the English countryside, using the same basic rules and procedures as the famous Colossal Cave Adventure by Crowther and Woods. You'll explore the church, its quaint churchyard, then plunge into the dark, dreaded chambers below. In the crypt may be found long-lost historical artifacts of great value, protected by a host of traps, tricks, and creatures, both natural and supernatural. The successful adventurer must possess courage, skill, intelligence, and a bit of luck. For the faint of heart or weak of knee, a save and restore feature is provided and highly recommended. That is a lot of descriptive text for what we're about to get into, and all written perfectly fine, too. So I guess we may have a text adventure here, which isn't completely off the rails or whatever. <laughs> because we have had a few of those. Also, apparently a $12 registration for a text adventure in 1990. Um, I don't know. We'll see. How, like, if this is like a really good text adventure or something. Or what's this about 35 and 70? Text adventures are the grandparents of the slick 3D color graphics quest type adventures available. Look at. Oh. <laughs> so basically he's saying this is like cheaper. Okay. Yeah, there's not much else in this doc file, so let's actually run the program itself. So, welcome to MS-DOS Crypt Adventure 2.0. Do you want the introduction? It's going to be the same as the... Okay. <laughs> well, we got a picture of a house and a crypt beneath it. Um, you're taking a walk in the English countryside. It is an area unfamiliar to you, but you have heard of a very interesting church in the vicinity. Church steeped in local lore and mythology. Some stories say that wonderful treasures of English antiquity may be found there. Others warn of a horrible fate awaiting the careless intruder. Likely both are true. Are you sure you want to continue? Sure. Enter info at any time for information and instructions. You're standing at an open gate somewhere in the English countryside. Beyond the gate, a path leads eastward to a small stone church with a square tower and a slate roof. English ivy crawls over sections of wall, framing the stained glass windows with ra ragged patches of green. South of the church is an ancient churchyard which is with its clustered groups of white monuments and headstones. To the west, north, and south are winding paths and forest. So I'm going to guess if I go northwest or south, I am going to basically end the game, as it were. Although maybe not, but in any case, let's go east. So you're on a path between the gate and the church, keep going east. You are in the vestibule of the church, in the base of the tower. To the west, open doors lead out to a path. To the east, open doors lead to the na nave? What's a nave? <laughs> I'm not 100% up to date on um, church terminology. So if I actually go help, is it going <laughs> to... Beats me. <laughs> no help here. So if we do info... Okay, so... Not really inf any information on the commands? Well, let me try that again. Yeah, and look just brings up the information that was already stated when going into the area. So, I guess we probably want to go east even more. You're in the west end of the nave. There is no one in sight. Colored light filters through stained glass and splashes among the pews and columns. I guess continue going east. You're in the east end of the nave. Transpe transept? Transept? I don't actually know that word. <laughs> It's very uncommon for me to hit a word that's not in my vocabulary. Transept wings open to the south and north. A platform with an altar rises to the east. Okay, so... Let's actually check out... The south and north for these other wings of the church. Let's go north. 
You're in the north transept. High on the le ledge is a marble bust of a man in a long curly wig. An engraved tablet underneath says, Sir Robert Wallop, Esquire, 1616 to 1691, benefactor of this church and parish who claimed that his life was saved in 1649 when, in mortal danger, he uttered the name of our patron saint and miraculously found himself safe in the sanctuary of the church. Okay, then. You're in the south transept. The south, an open door leads outside. A graffito on the wall reads, A is one of the four. Probably a hint to a puzzle or something. Okay, this I'm not liking. It said I went south into the south transept, and there was another door south to go outside. But the outside is a churchyard with a maze of tall stones crowded together, and it's not telling me where the exits are. And I don't think there's an exits command. No, there isn't. Uh, they did find a silver florin. I don't know wh what exactly that is. Can I take it? Take florin? Oh, I actually can take it. So can I see my items? Can I see my inventory? Okay, there we go. So carrying florin. Can I look at the florin? Oops, it would help if I... um. Oh, F... <laughs> Cannot repeat your previous command with F3. No. So how do I... Can I examine it, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure what the game wants of me here in order to look at something in my inventory. Okay, and at the other end of the, the main chamber in the church, there's a white candle that is apparently is important to know is exactly eight inches long, <laughs> even with two decimal values there, and that there's a matchbox with exactly ten matches in it. Okay, I think I've seen enough of this. So that was Crypt, or what was the full name of this? No, it was just called Crypt, yeah. Um, it's kind of basic for a text adventure, especially for a 1990 text adventure. Like, if this came out way earlier, like in the mid-80s, then I could understand it being this basic. But for as basic as it is, given what kind of text adventures followed, this is definitely a lot more basic for its, for a 1990 text adventure than it should be. Um, although I will say that the writing is actually pretty well done in terms of like structure, grammar, etc. Because they're, first of all, the guy's using a lot of words I don't even know. And second of all, they're not seeing any grammatical stakes, mistakes at all. So I guess what it comes down to is if a basic text adventure in 1990 would have been worth $12 to you or not. And that's a kind of a big if. And our last dig for today from Felicia Gladson is wingames backslash gg backslash bog. I'm going to guess maybe some kind of maze game? Like having to go through like a bog and try to find your way out? Or actually, no, this is Windows. So this might actually be a boggle clone. Let's see. So I got a setup, got a user gd, users gd dot write file, whatever that's for. And a help file, which you can probably access from the program itself, so... Yeah, let's just run it. Yeah, this looks like a Boggle clone if I ever saw one. Although it's a Boggle clone using the double... Using, like, the standard critical border? What? <laughs> yeah, you see how there's this thick blue border around the program? Like, normally that's reserved for... A modal window, a window that's supposed to be at the front of everything that you need to address before you can do anything else. But this is not modal. It's just using that border because it feels like it or something. I don't know. So anyways, BOG version 2.02, .02, copyright 94 by an Eric Bergman Terrell. And artwork by a Steve Hammond. Program may be freely distributed, and if you find this program useful, please send ten dollars to Pocket Sized Software. Okay then. So what's the help say? I like how it says here, Bog is a word finding game similar to Boggle. Um, no, it looks like it's exactly like Boggle. <laughs> similar is yeah. <laughs> So the object of Bog is to find as many words as possible in the grid. Words must be formed from adjacent cubes, and no cube can be used more than once, but a letter can be used more than once if it is on more than one cube. Obviously. Cube has up to eight adjacent cubes, one above, one below, one on the right, one on the left, and along the four diagonals. And apparently these, pe these people have released even more programs here. I'm not sure if we've seen any of these yet. Maybe we have. The one thing I'm a little concerned about here is like how big the word list is going to be, but 
Well, I guess we can kind of check here. Because we've got the exe itself, which is only 76 kilobytes. The data file here is 22.9. So if that's nothing but a dictionary, then that's pretty substantial. Also, I have no idea like what the timing is going to be like. Like if I hit start game here, it says searching for words. One moment, please. At least 27 words can be found. Oh, this isn't time based. That's interesting. So instead we're dealing with a boggle game that's all about just finding as many words as you can? Okay. Well, I guess we can try to find some here. Well, we got shag. Um, how to I... Do I just hit add word to list? Does that mean I found it right? What about hag? Yeah, two words from a maximum of 27. So... I seem to be doing okay. We got gas over there. And we've got gay, which is another valid word. So that's four out of 27. And we also have may, which may, no, may is a proper word. That'll be three or another of the 27. But what else do we got here? We've got chef. Chef, is chef a valid word? Chef is not in your dictionary. What? Okay, so if I say yes, then it adds it to the list, but it still, still says a maximum of 27? That's kind of weird. I mean, I just put in the word hem, and that was recognized. This thing knows how, the word hem, but not the word chef? I don't know, that just seems a little weird. <laughs> so I found about 19 words in here. I'm having trouble finding any more. Supposedly there's more. And this 27 never increased from adding those, from adding that one word that was missing with chef. Most of these words actually were already in there, so... Yeah, why, how could you be missing chef? That's... <laughs> oh, whatever. So I'm guessing if I hit quit game... Okay, so it tells me which words I found and which words could have been found, which I didn't find. And yeah, so it just simply didn't update that 27. So I missed yes, yam, sham, seem, see, sag, hey, has, easy. Well, <laughs> that's one that I should have found, but whatever. So that was bog. Kind of a weird way of doing a boggle game in that you're not trying to race against the clock, but you're just trying to find as much as possible before... Yeah, you're just f trying to find as much as possible. It's like a challenge to yourself. So... Let's see if redial's in here. Nope. <laughs> well, I think it's a valid word.